My interest in Nova Parks came from an interest in the environment in general, and I think that all goes back to, to being a Boy Scout. And my parents were not outdoorsy at all, but scouting gave me the opportunity to go camping every weekend and canoeing and hiking, and I absolutely fell in love with outdoor recreation and nature. So it, it resonated with me in kind of a deep way um, and when I saw the opportunity to work in the environmental field, in the park field, I, I just gravitated towards it. So when I first started with Nova Parks, um, it, was, it was a challenging time where we were not doing well financially and had not really grown our park system or programs in a while. It, it, the, the agency had just kind of gone flat for a period of time. And the biggest challenge was kind of getting things restarted and getting new life into a really uh, well-established and well-respected organization. You need to be growing programs and growing parkland and the necessity to grow and change as society grows and changes is, is critical. There are many jobs out there. I think one of the interesting things about the field of park and recreation is that most of the people in it understand that what they're doing is making their community a better place. And, and if you make that realization, all of a sudden, even the difficult parts of any job become much easier because you understand that it's for this greater good. How park and recreation has um, affected me and motivates me most is in a number of different ways. I have, like, like almost everyone, I have multiple interests. But one of my interests is in history. And we have all of these fascinating historic sites. And really, if you look almost anywhere, there's a story to be told. And history is all about interesting, insightful stories. It's not about dates and, and names of people. It's about what they did and, and how they did it. And, and that is always embedded in the land. So if you look at the property, you can figure out what happened in the past and, and where the interesting stories are. A woman who is now a good friend of mine, uh, Reverend Linda Alicudo, and we worked with her to create this Juneteenth program and do historic research about a cemetery and former church site on one of our parks that was really as we discovered more about it, became more and more of an inspirational story. And now she leads tours regularly in our parks. So one of the things that I personally enjoy a lot in the park and recreation field is any time we can acquire new land. And we've gotten a lot of land through donations. And those donations are all about relationship building and building trust and interacting with those that have the right kind of land that would make great parks. And it's, it's fun because it all, every time it seems like it's completely against the odds. How would you get fantastic parkland, land on the river, land that's a, that you know, has historic or natural features that are remarkable? How do you get that for either free or for very little? And and yet you can when you're focused on that, it, which, which is true with anything. If you focus on, some, on any goal, you can find ways to get there, and they're not always a straight line. One of the, the more recent stories of park creation that I, that I just love is the story of the Winkler Botanical Preserve. So this is 45 acres within the city of Alexandria, right outside of Washington, D.C., a very urban area. And Nova Parks acquired it about a year ago. And before that, it was the largest undeveloped natural area privately owned inside the Beltway of, of the metropolitan area. And it was owned by a family foundation that um, they were developers and they'd, they'd built a lot of, a lot of uh, Northern Virginia and made a lot of money, but they, created this nature preserve, they ran it like a public park for many years with summer camps and programs for school kids and all of that. But eventually, it kind of ran out of steam in terms of programming and, and running it. And 
Uh, it, it kind of went quiet for a number of years where it was open to the public, but there, were no, there was no programming. And so they eventually donated it to Nova Parks along with an endowment. And this year we have had it open again with summer camps. We're working with the schools and creating um, standards of learning based programs where we're gonna bring in school groups that will educate thousands of students about nature in this wonderful urban natural nature preserve. And now the, the, the Winkler Botanical Preserve is in public ownership and is run by a park agency. It will serve the public for a hundred years or more. We are engaging these, these children who would not normally have much interaction with nature. They're, it's a very urban area and they are, their eyes are wide open as they walk through the woods and see the streams and they're learning about science and how we can learn about it through nature. Those children are learning things that might influence their decisions throughout their lives. So I think the future of park and recreation is brighter than it's ever been or as bright as it's ever been because the world needs what we have. The parkland is the public lands. We all own it. It is, it is equally distributed among all people that live in that area. They can all access it. And if you think about it, parks have for a very long time, for centuries really, have been central to communities. Um, in New York City, they created Central Park very early on. Um, one of the earliest um, cities in the United States was Boston, and they created the commons very early on. Now, early on, it was to, to graze livestock that was owned by people who didn't own the, enough land for the livestock. We're really doing the same thing. We're providing a resource to everyone in the community to come out, and you don't have to be a landowner with, with a lot of land to benefit from having open space. So it is, it is central to healthy communities to have park and recreation facilities and parks, and, and it has been for a long time, and those are the, the communities that, that thrive. So a community that invests in park and recreation is a community that is, that is investing in itself and the fabric of that community for, for decades and generations to come.